Well, my name is Bob Ferenic. I am the curator of vertebrate paleontology at the New York State Museum in Albany, New York. And today I'm going to be talking about a unique ecosystem that formed right at the end of the last ice age called the Champlain Sea. It is North America's last inland sea and it's where the Atlantic Ocean actually flooded part of southeastern Canada and northern New York State and northern Vermont State right at the end of the last ice age, about 13,000 years ago. When we talk about the ice age, we typically think about a singular period, like a single period when it was really, really cold. But the Pleistocene epoch, when we refer to the, the geology of the ice ages, um, is really a time period from about two and a half million years ago to about 10,000 years ago that is defined by climate change. And it is defined by warm interglacial periods and cool glacial periods. And Currently, we are in a warm interglacial period. And as you can see in this uh, slide from about 450,000 years ago, we've gone from these warm glacial per interglacial periods to cool glacial periods many times over that time scale. And it has occurred many times over the past two and a half million years. The last time we were in a glacial period was about 25,000 years ago. And it was at the height of this cold period, what we call the last glacial maximum. Sometimes it's referred to as the LGM, last glacial maximum. And during this last glacial maximum, we had really large ice sheets grow on the continents. And this is typified by ice sheets that we can see in North America and on Eurasia. And in North America, this ice sheet covered much of continental North America. And particularly for New York State, it covered almost all of New York State except for two areas, the southernmost portion of Long Island and a very small area that is now Allegheny State Park in southwestern New York State. And on Long Island, we call it Long Island today because, it, because it's surrounded by water. But these ice sheets were so large and there was so much water locked up in the ice sheets that the oceans were lowered by about 425 feet. So Long Island would have been a big hill about 25,000 years ago rather than an island because anything in a water depth of 425 feet or lower would have been land. And this is a great picture that I found on a web page called xkcd.com that shows the height of this ice sheet that was in North America. And in Albany, New York, we're about the same latitude as Toronto. And this ice sheet would have been about 2,000, 2,100 meters high, which equates to about 6,500 feet. So this is a really big ice sheet. It's a really big glacier, and it's locking up a lot of ice and water. What's also interesting to think about is this ice is always flowing forward. It's not like a block of ice that you buy at the grocery store, but it's more like a pancake batter. And it is always flowing from a high point to a low point. It's always flowing forward. And it stops where the heat, um, it, it can't grow anymore. So it stops towards the south where it can't grow anymore. And as the earth warms up from the last glacial maximum into the current interglacial period, this ice sheet will start to recede towards the north. Even though it's still flowing forward, it, the, the southern end of that ice sheet will migrate to the north. And as that ice sheet migrates to the north, at different times um, what, in what is now New York State, we get um, different geological formations. Um, and one of these is called a proglacial lake, or a lake, a very large lake that forms in front of uh, these ice sheets. And we have, we, you can see these in the picture um, on the slide, the rightmost picture, that we have a large lakes forming we're in the Finger Lakes region and also in the Hudson Valley about 13,000 years ago. Once this Laurentide ice sheet, this ice sheet that's covering North America, recedes north of the St. Lawrence River mouth, um, because the ice sheet was so big, it actually forced the crust of the earth below sea level. And once that ice sheet recedes north of the mouth of the St. Lawrence River, instead of the St. Lawrence River flowing from west to east out to the Atlantic Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean actually floods this area of northern New York State, northern Vermont, and southeastern Canada from about 13,000 years ago to about 9,000 years ago. And it is a complete marine ecosystem. 
and we have many, many fossils um, of mammals and fishes and invertebrates like clams and snails that have been found in the sediments um, from the Champlain Sea. And this is a picture that I took in Iceland of a tongue of a glacier from one of the ice sheets that's still on Iceland. And what I wanted to point out here is that these ice sheets aren't crisp. They're not clean ice. They're actually really dirty ice. And as they're flowing, they're depositing rocks and sand and sediments in front of them. And you can see in this picture these hills of this rock and sand and sediment on a small scale um, in, near, in Iceland. But if we think about it in, um, on a continental scale, we will get the deposition of um, these glacial sediments in, from different habitats onto the landscape. And we can see this in New York State. And this is a slide from a colleague at SUNY Plattsburgh called Dr. David Franzi. And he provided this slide. And it, what I really like about it is it shows the different sediment need from the geology. This ice sheet, when it came through, scoured the landscape down to bedrock. And then as that glacier is flowing, it's depositing sand and silt, which we call glacial till, which is the green um, portion of the slide. And then as that ice sheet recedes, and you have lakes form in front of the glacier, the proglacial lakes, we get lake clays. And then once that Laurentide ice sheet recedes to north of the Saint, mouth of the St. Lawrence River, then we start to see marine or ice form in the sediments. And then once the crust starts to rebound, because the ice is no longer on top of it, and the seaway starts to, it's now being forced out to the Atlantic Ocean, we get deposition of sands, more like beaches. And then finally, on the top of um, these sediments, we start to get the soils that we see today. So we can read and we can learn about the Champlain Sea just by looking at the geology. And within these sediments, we also find fossils of animals that lived in the Champlain Sea. Um, ecosystem, because uh, Dr. Franzi called me about a decade ago now, and he was showing his students the sediments and learning about the Champlain Sea. Um, in his geology class, and one of the students on a field trip found what turns out to be a ring seal fossil. And that got me starting to think about the ecosystem that was around, around about that time at the end of the last ice age, about 13,000 years ago to 9,000 years ago. And what was interesting to me about that is that you form an ocean brand new. You don't have an ocean, and then for about 4,000 years, you have an ocean. So what was interesting to me is that how does that, sea fo how does that ocean ecosystem form? How are the interactions between the animals? Are they the same or different from ecosystems that we see uh, today, um, per particularly like Arctic ecosystems? And for about 150, 200 years, we have found fossils within these Champlain Sea sediments. Not only did we find this ring seal fossil, but we, there have been harbor seals found. In fact, the Vermont's state marine fossil is a beluga whale from the Champlain Sea period called, called the Charlotte whale. Um, beluga whales are the white whales that you can typically find in aquariums. And you can see them in the, the right-hand bottommost picture on this slide. But we've also found uh, seabirds, like this thick-billed myrrh. Um, the thick-billed myrrh is related to the extinct great auk. We found bearded seals. We found walruses. Uh, paleontologists have found fin whales, humpback whales, right whales. Many different species of Arctic uh, animals have been found in Champlain Sea sediments. And not only have we found vertebrates, animals with bones, but we found invertebrate animals like marine snails and bivalves like clams and mussels. And also on this picture, you can see a, a neat um, thing is we, in concretions, they have found uh, marine fishes like capelin or cod. And capelin or cod are known to be food for modern day animals like seals. Um, and so we're finding a lot of the animals from Arctic ecosystems in these Champlain Sea sediments. And we can learn a lot about the habitats and the ecosystem just by the animals that were found in these sediments. Because we found fin whales, we know that there was likely areas that had no ice. Fin whales don't like to swim in areas that had 
have ice. They like open waters. But in contrast, we also know that there had to be areas that had, um, had ice in them. So ring seals and walruses are known to prefer to have ice. Walruses feed on bivalves, they feed on clams. And then when they get tired, they need a place to rest. So they come up and they rest on ice that's thick enough to hold their body weight. We also know that there were harbor seals and harbor seals need beaches. So there had to be beaches available for harbor seals to live. And then we have these beluga whales that are found all over the Champlain Sea. And beluga whales are very wide ranging and they even sometimes investigate rivers. So we've also have at the New York State Museum specimens from the Champlain Sea that we can, we've collected and we learn about um, the habitats and what was in the Champlain Sea. And I brought one of those specimens with me. This is the fossil of a beluga whale that was found in Norfolk, New York. Um, this is the top right portion of the skull. And in this portion of the skull, you can see that there is this is where the blowhole would be. And if I flip it over, this is where the teeth would have been in this beluga whale on this portion of the skull. I've also brought with me from the same specimen, and we have a decent portion of the entire skeleton um, of this animal. This is a vertebrae. So you can see the preservation. It almost looks like it's a modern day animal skeleton. So we can learn a lot about the ecosystems from the mammals, but we can also learn a lot about the ecosystems from the marine invertebrates, things like bivalves, the clams. Different species of bivalves prefer to live at different water depths. So some species of bivalves like to live closer to shore, and some species like to live further off from shore. So if we can identify the different species, we can get an idea about how much water, what was the water depth at a particular time in a particular area, just by looking at the different species of bivalves that were, that were found in the sediments. And also, one of the things that I do is I can look at chemicals in teeth and bones, and I focus on the teeth and t uh, tooth roots and bones of uh, animals, and we can look at the chemicals in those and understand things about where they were living and what they were eating and what trophic level they lived at in those ecosystems. And then we can compare the data that I have from the Champlain Sea to modern day ecosystems to tell whether it was the same or whether it was different. And one of the things that we found out by looking at um, the chemicals called carbon isotopes or nitrogen isotopes or oxygen isotopes is that the chemical signal of the animals that lived in the Champlain Sea, like the walruses or like the beluga whale or like the fin whale, are very similar, almost exactly the same as the chemical signal of animals that we find in modern Arctic marine ecosystems. So the ecosystem of the Champlain Sea and the interrelationships between those and among those animals is the same that we have in modern day ecosystems. So the Champlain Sea ecosystem was very similar to modern day Arctic ecosystems. So this was as a unique habitat, a unique ecosystem that we had in New York State, in Northern um, Vermont and Southeastern Canada, that we only had for about 4,000 years, but we can learn a lot by looking ab at the geology and the animals, the fossils that lived in that ecosystem. And I'm going to leave you with this slide. This is a close-up picture of Vermont's state marine fossil, the Charlotte whale, which is a beluga whale um, from the Champlain Sea. Thank you.